What's up, everybody? It's Lady J Bookums. And it's Brand Man Sean, and we're back with the No Name Podcast. Why are we saying no name? Because we don't have a name yet, but... So stay tuned because we're going to be hoping y'all give us some names of what y'all think this podcast should be called. This is just episode two, part two. We're experimenting. Help right. us get it done, y'all. Lady J, what are we going to talk about? Take, so, take us in. So I had a, a real cool topic. I feel like a lot of people would have some opinions about this, right? So my okay. topic for today, my folks, my people, is going <laughs> to be the music industry. Is it a dream filler? Or dream killer, okay? Mm, mm. Mm, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason why I want to talk about that is because we have so much going on in entertainment. You know, I feel like every... And that's, this is not even just for music, right? Mm-hmm. But this is entertainment in general, like actors, whatever. So many people want to be a part of the entertainment business, right? right. And they have all of these, like preconceived notions about what it's going to be like when they get in. Like, oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get money. I'm going to get fame. I'm going to get all this stuff. But then we have a lot of people who get into entertainment and they just, they lose their mind. You know what I mean? Like, they they become so depressed. They all on drugs. You know? A lot of They all in the media for all kinds of the wrong things. Mm Mm-hmm. And then they all be crying. Then they all get to the point where they're making those videos like, yo, the business is, you never thought, you know, it's the devil. It's this, it's that. (laughs) I want to get out the business, you know. So we have all of that going on right now. Mm -hmm. And and particularly, you like, you know, we have the Summer Walker thing. So Summer Walker, everybody knows she's been, like, taking off. She got in the game and she took off and she's, you know, bouncing all on London on the tracks, you know, lapping all kinds of stuff. She's very, on, on social media, she's very lit. But in person, she's super awkward, right? When she's been doing her, she's been doing, like, interviews and everything. She's super duper awkward. Right, right, right. I haven't seen everything, right? But I've heard a lot of people say that as far as, like, the how awkward that she is. I definitely heard that. I think I saw, like, one small clip. And she is, like, more meek than you would expect her to be versus the energy she shows online. Right. But one thing that I think is to consider, like, there's a lot of people like that. Right, like th- that's when they, when you know when people will say, well, I know I don't know if they say say it to you, but dudes like growing up, right? Dudes will always be like, hey man, you know that quiet girl, that's the one, right? You know, <laughs> it's, right. it's different behind the scenes, right? Right. Sometimes there's always people who are shy or act one way, but then of course, just like when you get with your family or you get with your friends, you might act certain um, differently. The difference is though, if you project that out to the world, right? Show how you act with other people, fans are going to expect and think that that's you all the time. They don't understand that this is the comfortable me-me, but right. generally speaking, I'm shy. That's what I think where the disconnect is. But I think that's, like, where it comes into being authentic, right? Because we have we have so many of the artists or entertainers that get into this business, and it's like a lot of people feel like I have to be a certain way. Like, oh, I'm not mm. a social media person, but because I'm getting a little fame, I got to be on social media and I got to do this and do this, act crazy right. or whatever. Right. And then when something happens, they're like, well, that's not really me. And I think that's one reason why Summer Walker is getting a lot of backlash because all her fans, like she went canceling tour dates and she went online talking about, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to sell out. I'm not trying to change myself and blah, blah, blah. But the fans is looking at her like, bro, we've been running your streams up. You know what I mean? Like, we've been buying your tickets up. Yeah. You can't you can't tell us, like, this is not what you want when we've already invested into you. Like, because this is what it is to be an artist. You feel me? Or being a public recording artist. Like, this is what it is to do that. So it's like, you kind of got to come out yeah. And actually be yourself. Like don't be don't come out. First of all, your your lyrics make you seem like you're lit. You know what I mean? You don't sound like an introvert. You don't sound like somebody who's shy yeah. with all this stuff that you're talking about in your lyrics, right? right? So it's like we're expecting you to be a certain way. You can't fault the people for being like being mad at you for you coming out saying like, oh, I'm not doing the music no more. I'm not doing interviews no more. All right, you can't fault people on that end. But it's also no indictment on the artist because I think it's common, right, for artists to be that way. Well, not not so much today. But, like, there's always been an artist, a type of artist that can express themselves. And when they're on stage or when they're in that zone and they're a whole other person. And then when they're just them, though, the normal them is like... Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, right? How do, like, artists create these alter egos because they have to put them in a space 
to create this whole different type of energy that just might not be them in the first place. Or they have that side to tap into them, but you literally have to go in the zone to bring that side out of you. Right. But but at the same time, it's like, all, all that I know as a fan is what you give me, right? That, that's what I'm saying. I can't. You can't fault the fans. At right. the end of the day, this is what we see and this is what we expect. I think cases like this, all right, with uh, Summer and other artists that you'll start to probably see more of that, people will look at Summer as like a case study. And I saw, ooh, I see how Summer moved. Maybe I'm like Summer. But at the end of the day, I saw how it affected the fan base or that little uproar created, right. and I don't want that. So they might move accordingly and be aware of how to communicate that so this never happens. You get what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, I feel like, because she's not the only one. So That's I, what I'm saying. She's not the only one. Right. One, so one thing I feel about a lot of entertainers, like or creative people in general, I feel like creative people are more of introverts anyway. Like A lot, a of, lot them, of creative you know? people, they're super creative and, and and they like to be alone to express you know whatever they express to and then they put, own, to be in your own mind right. and figure stuff out and create and yeah right so I think that's one thing that she's trying to say but when when it comes to like uh you know artists or entertainers just being authentic I feel like that's something that we're lacking and that's the reason why so many people are coming out and they 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 start off so strong and then they get into the game and they, they start seeing like oh I have to do all these interviews I got to be in front of all these people I got to do all these things. And then they just don't want it no more. Like Ari mm-hmm. Lennox was another one. Uh, Boom Gang. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what y'all know about this guy. But yeah. he he literally like I just dropped my phone the other day because he put on um he he posted a video okay. on Instagram. First of all, he came out and he was like, hey, everyone, my name's Johnny Cabana or John Cabana. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, first of all, whose voice are you using right yeah, now? Yeah. Like, Switch it up. Boy, so, but he literally <laughs> came out and said the, the most important thing. First of all, he said, you know, I apologize because I had this platform. I've been using my platform to promote all this negative, crazy mm-hmm. content, right? right. And uh, if we take a trip down memory lane, you know, he was like going to different um, interviews and he was so high or uh, whatever that's, that's allegedly all that, yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying where it's like your whole team is so sober and you you just gone and he shot himself and all this all these crazy things was going on it's like he was crying out for love but in this video that he just posted he basically said crying i apologize crying out for love <laughs> <laughs> yo why don't you love me yeah he's crying for love for help attention some he was crying for something boy that boy was dying inside but my opinion. But uh, he basically said on this video, like, yo, I want to apologize. In in the John Cabana voice, like, or Cabana, he was like, I want to apologize to you guys for using my platform to promote negativity. You mm. know, so he said, I, I just want it to be loved. He said, but I want to be loved for who I am, not this character that I created mm-hmm. to be a part of the industry. Oh. His words, yeah. not quote unquote, but like, those are his words. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. Like, we have these artists coming out or entertainers, period, coming out, Insta, Insta models, all these people coming out, doing all these things just to be reached or be loved or be popular or fit in or whatever. That's true. And then when people start testing you, like we start pulling your car, expecting you to do certain things, you don't want to do it. Yeah. I seen you do tricks online. Do that trick in front of right. me. Right. That's like exactly you, what they're looking for. Super busted open. Like, <laughs> but I see you in a strip club and you don't even want to bounce. Like, girl, you want to bounce that booty. Like, you want to bounce it all over Instagram. Hey, you, what? You, you can say that without getting in trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But this is an era I think this will pass, honestly. Do you? Yes, because everybody, the new era is always learned from the pr- previous area. Right. And, okay, we we opened up for all this creativity. And then online happened, and it allowed people to create fan bases more quickly. And what people started to see, that mimicry, mimicry was getting them there faster. Right. Right? And I can copy, and I can be like this. I'm going to put on the outfit, right? I'm going to get a tattoo on my face. I'm going to put on colorful hair. I'm going to dress like I'm a little dirtier or something like that. <laughs> like, whatever. You know, whatever. All right? And then this is going to get me here. And then I'm going to start doing stupid stuff. I'm going to bust TVs in the hotel. Right. I'm going to, like, drink, like, five, Whatever you know, yeah. you're gonna do all these things, but now people like the kids coming up, they've had the opportunity to watch the rise and the fall, the rise and the fall. So they might recognize, oh, there's some elements that can act as market. We watched Takashi, right? His situation. Oh boy, right? He's so a perfect example. You can see all these elements where, okay, this is useful, and I can use this smart. But how do I do that in a way? that's one more authentic to me and that's more sustainable. I think kids cuz will figure that out. So we'll recognize this area well, yo, it was wild. These people were just wild like, now. Do, yeah, they were just doing a whole <laughs> bunch of stupid shit just to do stupid shit, but 
the next generation will figure out a way to do that where it's less of that, right? We'll see a little bit more of this R&B stuff. We'll see a little bit of people having their own version of them versus this this troll marketing for the sake of troll right. marketing. But we would have to have like a group of people who start to do this in order for the for yep. the the next generation to see it because really like the generation now they are the young kids that are looking up to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like YK Osiris, is that his name? YK Osiris. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was just online putting these videos out about the music industry and he was basically like, you know, y'all got to stop thinking like being signed is a blessing from God. It's from, it's not from God. And he was like, why is it that, you know, we talking about all the rappers and sing and so-called singers these days? Cause I don't really think we have R&B anymore. I call it rap and B. You know what I mean? It's a lot we, of rap and B. We, we have R&B. Who is R&B? Coming, coming back. If it's, you, it's listen, if you're. Ari Lennox, right? Okay, yes. Summer Walker-ish. Um, Summer Walker-ish. Ari um, Lennox is probably more more the same. LMA. Um, who else? Uh, Daniel Caesar. I feel like R and B to there, me was those singers who really ad lib on like their tracks, not where it's just Rarely like the, like they, they they're like like they got the, the people, runs runs like people, Tyrese used to have the runs. Oh no, nah, you talking about the R and B? I'm talking about R and B R and B. But yeah, that's we that's got a rap whole and different B. Type of, but that was R that era of R and B was R and B with with hip hop experience into it as well. That hard like the jagged edge, the the uh, not just not juvenile. What am I thinking? I'm not Genuine, even, oh, just, right? Do um, you find? No, nah, I don't know what all that. <laughs> <laughs> but Ooh, like, we used to call all, <laughs> all that right there, they were going rougher. They added an edge, pioneered by uh, Puffy uh, largely, like added that edge to R and B artists, that hip hop edge, image image wise, and all that stuff. Because it was a little bit smoother going before that. Yeah, but I, I still feel like R and B back in the day was like, especially from the male a male singing R and B. It was really about like making love and stuff. Like the R and B oh, yeah. that we have now. Every they all say the B word. Like you can't have an R and B song calling females but, bitches. But that's what I'm saying. You it, can't have an R and B song talking about. I don't even want to say it, but it's like look, this is just a rapping B that, track. That is most people, right? Like, for a while, it was like R and B was for real, for real out, out of there. But that's what I'm saying. There's people because of course it never stopped. It just wasn't getting any attention. There was all those artists, but now there's actually been artists that have gotten attention, like the. The uh, what's her name? The, L- the LMA and um, Ari Lennox, those, they are that now. Like definitely we'll, are. When, when we'll see, look, all right, I'm feeling some <laughs> some senses about Ella. That's all good, but she got her she got her platform. I, the right? only thing that bothers me with Ella is that after every track, she starts talking like. And her, <laughs> that's listen, some R and B stuff. Nah, that's right, some old yeah, school R and B. Let that, me that, tell that you Lenny what bothers Williams me. And I, I, I love you. He talk. He stop and talk yeah, for like. Yeah, but two like minutes. her accent. Not that. Listen, I love people with those accents, but it's weird how like your song is so your voice sounds so American, and then yeah. at the end you. Just, I'm like, who is this? Like, yeah. it bothers me. I just be like, girl. It sound like she brought in a poet to. <laughs> right. I really be on the yeah. next. Nah, I hit the next right. soon as nah. soon as the beat drop. <laughs> for real. Uh, all right, well, no. The, all right, when we see the rise of R&B come back more heavily, I think, will be when we start to see more males, though. Yeah. That's what, because I feel like women are holding down. Because there's more names, for some reason, they're just not coming to me. But, like, there's not that many males right. that are really... Like Jacquees. And he's more of the rapping bee in a lot in exactly. most of the cases. Um, but swear he the king I can't. I can't of think something. of... One male that's because Bryson Till is a trap soul, which is really what the rap rap and beat thing is. Exactly. Like Even like Tory Lanez is like Tor- yeah, Tory Lanez doesn't do too much like clean cut for real R and B. Right, but he Tory Lanez is crazy. So his I don't know if you listen to his uh, like mix, crazy his mentally take. or cra- crazy. No, no, his songs Lyri- is like oh, yeah, yeah lyrically dope. like Talent. his yeah, yeah, his yeah. new project that he just dropped is r- ridiculous. Donkey Chick Tape was yes. it five? Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's definitely crazy. I haven't got a chance to listen to it. I've been wanting to. I feel like it's gotta up wait there. I get the vibes. With I got to clean summer. my house first. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, <feel you. laughs> I need some open space. I feel Turn you. Put the fan on, put on a candle or something. You know what I mean? I feel you. But yeah, I don't know, man. It's just like getting back to the topic because we probably went off a little bit. But it's like, <laughs> yo, I just feel like artists, I think they we have the opportunity to be way more authentic these days. But no, it's like. That's true. We got to be, we got to start being comfortable with ourselves, you know, to present ourselves. Because this this goes even deeper than just people in general, like being on social media, you know, like every female that I know probably uses a filter. 
You know what I'm saying? And that that just plays a part of like how comfortable are you with yourself? Like mm. you see, I had to pull up with the scarf. Do you see the scarf? Pull up with the scarf. Yeah. This is a T-shirt. This ain't even a scarf. You know what I mean? But it's like, yo, that's black women are magicians. You feel I love me? Y'all. Look, you got to be comfortable with yourself because if you're not comfortable with yourself, people are not going to be comfortable with the real real you and they're going to always expect this character that you feel like you have to present to the world. Man, first of all, hold on. I got to stop for a second. Oh, snap. What? Because you talked about how rigged up my equipment was, but you got a t-shirt. First of all, why would you put me on blast? (laughs) First of all, we can turn these cameras. (laughs) To what we working with, like, we would expect more. But, see, we, <laughs> we appreciate you because we appreciate your authentic self. You know, the quality right, right, of right. what you're going to put out is, is, is still good. It's still going to be Right? Yeah. So that's the thing. If you're an artist, you're an entertainer, like, you can be dope being yourself, and then your quality will just shine through, right? Your quality is going to shine through way more than, you know, you putting out something that, that's, that's just putting it out just because you feel like, yo, this is what I got to put out to just be this person or to sell, whatever. You know, the quality is going to start going down. Like, Summer Walker might start going down because now you're trying to take the music away from fans, right? You're trying to take that quality, everything that we just invested in. We we push we push your streams up to the max, you know, and now you're talking about you don't want to do music no more. All right, do you believe, as an artist, just, cause just as advice, being somebody who thinks about marketing and branding and things like that, do you think an artist could actually build a sustainable career today, right? Um, just being a recording artist. I think because I think it's a different era, right? A recording artist back then used to be for real, for real recording artists, and it wasn't that much notoriety created about it. But it seems to today there's a way where you can get so much of the same visibility, but never come out in person right. and and make a a lot of money. Definitely. So, there is a difference between a recording artist and a performing artist. Mm-hmm. There are recording artists that make six figures and that we you and me probably never heard of them. But what they do is they they build that fan base online. Period. They build the fan base online. They have product. Like they really have the super fans cuz they are selling albums. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they're yeah. selling albums, they're selling merch, they have fan clubs, and that's where they're making most of their income. So, but they only do stuff online. They never pull up to anywhere to perform. Now, some of them do live performances where they're broadcasting live online. You know what I've I mean? I've been trying to get, I, I had a few people where I'm like, I've been trying to get them to do that for years. The ability to just broadcast live, interact with people, do a special performance, do an unplugged live. There's so many things and versions right. that you can do live that you couldn't do before that, yeah, there's a Yo. lot of there's a lot of cap in that. Then we have all these tipping features on TikTok and all these other platforms. Exactly. You can take tips, you can charge people to get in, and they'll still tip you and get exactly. some more money out of the process. And mm-hmm. sell merch, link in bio or link, hey, go buy it now, have a call to action, all that stuff. All of that. And that's why I'm saying, like, so for those artists, it's mm-hmm. like for everybody feeling like, yo, I want to, I, I need to get a deal because you feel like getting a deal is going to get you in places that you might not get in, or whatever the fact, whatever the reason, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do on your own. Like, Summer Walker is dope, hands down. Her her pen game is dope. She Her voice is dope. She plays multiple instruments. So she literally could have went the recording artist route if you felt like, I'm not a person that likes to be in the public eye. I don't want to be sitting around doing interviews and all that. All right, but here's another thing, though. The reality of becoming what she's become is hard to cope with or understand before you get there. So that's another thing. See, everything that glitter and gold, right? Your mama used to say, I'm going to let you touch it just so you can see why you shouldn't be touching it, right? So this is really, for all of us artists looking at it, we've had artist after artist show us why the music industry or getting signed to a label is probably not the best thing. Like, especially now, it's way more artists coming out now that's speaking up about the things that are happening once you sign that contract, when right? You said YK Osiris said something right. like that, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he he been saying it, and then like all these weird stuff started happening in his life. You know, he getting arrested, all this stuff. But he literally was like, "Bro, like when you sign that paper, his words, you know, you're basically selling your soul." Now, one thing about independent artists, like when you sign to a label, you actually become like an employee. Like you're working like a nine to five. You have to bust your ass to get those performances and all this stuff because the the labels metrics. right the labels are giving you this money that you have to give back mm-hmm. at some point and then it's like 
most people don't own their masters. They don't own a lot of stuff. So for a performing artist, you make your money performing or getting sponsors or, you know, having some type of product, linking up with a partnership like uh, Cardi B with Fashion Nova. You know what I mean? It's like you mm-hmm. have to create all these other lanes of, of income because a lot of that money that comes back in is going to go to the label and go and go to the team. It got to be buzzed down like a billion ways. So you have to literally be on call. You got to go to all of these concerts and be in front of all these people, do these, like you got to act like you was a nine to five. You got to pull up like it's a job. No. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's so, the process. People don't, people think artists, I'm creative and I just want to do art for a living, but it's so much more to do it sustainably than just do art for a living. Right. Like showing up, all the time, consistently maintain those relationships. You already feel like, oh, you're a you, to you person. No, you got to talk to these people. You go to the radio, you go to somebody's podcast or whatever. You still got to make sure not only do they do it and you pay for the service, it's in your best interest to build a relationship with those people right. again and again. It's an entire process to really nurture. And that's what I mean, though. Like, for one, not even, look, even outside of all that. Just to be recognized by a lot of people when you go outside, that's a completely different experience. Right. It's, it's weird. And, like, I know you've probably come in, come uh, had, like, environments where people recognize you, right? You know me a little it's, bit. It's, it's, but it's different when you think about that, like, what if I'm Justin Timberlake, if I'm Kanye, or I'm right. Jay-Z, Beyonce, and that's a different... And because of what you do, it's a different type of fan, right? Fortunately, because yeah. it's a little bit more education. Most, most of the people are thinking about... Like, people who are looking for education typically aren't the same kind of fools that are just, I'm a fan and I'm a, you know what I mean? Right. That's a different type of person. I'm addicted to you. or I'm a, Like, that's a whole other thing to deal with. And people just want you to either dance for them. I just want a, a picture or I just want to say I saw you, so I'm going to do something stupid to get your attention. I'm like, right. that's a whole other level of thing. And not to be able to walk outside, that, that experience is an interesting experience. So I think... People aren't prepared for what that's actually like. It does look good, right? But so how do you well, prepare for that, though? That's the question. Well, right? that's the thing. You don't find out till you get there if that's you. So then you, if you start to realize it's not you, you can do what Summer Walker is doing because I think she's it's pretty early. It's, it's weird now, but I think this is a positive move for her to be doing it this early. It'll hurt in the set in the meantime it's for people, like fans and all that stuff, but now they can strategize on how do we move forward. And But it can it possibly, because some people just can't, they can say, oh, I'm not doing music anymore. But if you're signed, you have, like, obligations that you have to fulfill. Some people fulfill, can't do that. Yeah, right, before you right. can even get out of a contract. Like, yeah. she might have a contract that says you have to put out these many albums. Like, you can say you're not doing music, but if you're not putting out any albums for us, you're not putting out music, period. Like, you I don't can't think, work with people. I don't people. think she says she's not going to do that. Like, LVRN, Love Renaissance, her label, like, I've seen the post. They've been pretty supportive and understanding of that. Of course, you never know everything that's going on behind scenes. But they've been supportive of it, and I think they they recognize like that the way that team moves. To me, they'll be smart enough to also realize that this is a, a learning experience because maybe there'll be more artists that we can deal with and create a new model. It'll force you to think about new ways if you want to run business and do business well. Recognize that this this might this isn't just an isolated thing, right? For for once you're successful, this gives you an opportunity to learn a new model and create something. How do we maximize on an artist that moves this way? And now as a label. All right, we can take in both types of artists. You want to be out there, do that whole thing, whoopie whoop, but we also know how to profit and maximize for the for the business while also taking care of the artist's health in this type of model as well. Okay, boom. So you just said something about artist health, right? Because I was going to ask you, one thing I feel like that we're getting a lot of is um, people saying that all of these artists have like these disorders, like mm-hmm. Kanye, her, yeah. anxiety. Her has a, what, what did uh, say about not her? Not her, I'm saying her as in Summer Walker. Oh, okay. You know, they were saying like she got some stuff going on, like, you know, the anxiety or depression, which is very real. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have all of these, quote unquote, like disorders going around within like entertainment in general. Like, and this is with actors and stuff too, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, and then it comes to a point where a lot of our entertainers, you know, fall victim to like being on drugs. Mm-hmm committing suicide we have mm-hmm. a long list of like artists committing suicide inter- actors all of that stuff like so it's like what do we how how do we cope with that what like because people always say it when i read comments they're like but these are the people that the fans put on like mm-hmm. these are these are the f- people that fans make famous you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so it's like what do we how do we how are we supposed to like act or or even respond to that because even with in Summer Walker's case, 
every when everybody was like attacking her, all of the celebrity people were like, "Yo, well, this this anxiety or this disease or whatever, this is real, and people need to understand that. Like, we're not just robots; we're people." And blah. All right. So one, you know how people say the more money you get, you become more of yourself, or at it, when the really, I mean, what, or people change is like really, really is projecting you on a larger level. Right. So people can say that positively, but it also shows negatively. I always say when something scales, when it gets more exposure, the 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 issues get exposed, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's your business and then you realize, oh, I got to get my processes together, or whether you're a person and you realize, oh man, I should have fixed this broken part of me. Right. And it exposes that brokenness. But most people aren't exposed to that level of attention, so their brokenness, brokenness doesn't get analyzed. They don't even have to encounter it and come to grips with it because they're unaware with it. It's only when you're going through something or you get hit with it, right? You might deal, oh, you might find somebody in a relationship that you finally actually love or something, and mm. it, for real, for real, finally. And then you say, man, how come I can't get past that point? Dang, I, I got daddy issues, or dang, I got, <laughs> right? You know, like <laughs> it's only issues. when it matters right. that you get it, that it, that it becomes. A thing. Yeah. So there's a there's this group of people who've actually crossed that threshold, and they're telling you it's like this over here. But the truth is, no matter how much we hear it intellectually, everybody always thinks I wouldn't if I had that much money. If I had this, like they right. they can't relate. It's yeah. like a, a type of it's attention classism, right? They don't understand. They can't connect. So, like what gets done about it is one people have to humanize people. That is a, a, like you have to realize like we're we're not just out. Ab- ab- they're not an object. Right. Because the whole mentality of we consumed you, we put you on is whack. First of all, you one individual. You, it's not like you as a group of fans and said we all about to put them on. <laughs> you like this person. You have, all right, if you want to stop listening to me because of this, cool, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? But, like, we don't own you now. That's how people, like, yeah. we, we put you on, we owned you, now dance. And that's the same mentality that, honestly, like, when you look back, in, in, in the history, how they had black people who could do, they couldn't have rights, but then they could be entertainers, right? It was the same way. Like, we we own you, do what we want, want you to do. You don't right. get the access to the same human level of empathy. Right. And, and that's the issue with with that to me. So the way you solve for it is, one, fans need to educate, be educated and understand more. I think there's going to be more of it because there's more people that get it. Just because of social media, mm-hmm. more people get exposed to that level of attention versus before it was just a huge gap, right? right in terms of att- attention, but now there's a lot of people who still have some level of so like you got like 24k or something like that on Instagram or something like that. You know what no, I mean? That's pretty good. Like back in the day, that wouldn't have been the same. Like right. You, you might have had, you know, you, you might have been known, but it wouldn't be one platform people could constantly see you. In, yeah. Right. So I think the fan education is a huge part of it. Obviously, awareness and people doing whatever they need to health-wise and having that self-awareness is another part of it. And then another part of it is the infrastructure of the music industry um, is built on a lot of serving vices for artists, right, and able and being able to control them, Yeah. right? So I'm going to serve you these vices, and we're going to have this whole mindset of, you need these things for your creativity to actually be activated, right? So now you feel like you need this to do what you need to do. And this thing also allows me to keep you in this space where I can just take the money in the business and I can live my my merry-go-lucky life. Right. And you are in this whole state of flux. And now you get attached to something and dang, you dead. But that sucks for about three weeks. And now I got to find another artist that I can, I can link up with. Right. Right. So like, I think as people become more and more independent and think for themselves and not all go through the same system, people will begin to be able to think for themselves to a standpoint of, hey, this is what's good for my business. This is good for the lifestyle that I want to live. I don't have to prescribe um, or subscribe to the same system that everybody has put and want me wanted me to do. And they'll start to, once again, watch all this stuff happening with these other artists and realize, I don't need this. I'll see some other artists pop up and be successful. Chance is something he did so well, so quickly, that it's hard for people to feel like he's touchable and Mm. use him as an example. But some artists like Russ make it a little bit more touchable in some ways, even though he creates... You know, a whole persona that still makes it a little less. But then you still will see somebody like 
Arizona Zervis. I don't know if you know who he is. He has a song called Roxanne that popped on TikTok, and he's still indie, mm. and he's even more touchable. He doesn't have, I don't think, the artist awareness in the community yet, but you'll start to see more of those stories and these case studies, and ten people will be able to believe for themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that you were saying was, um, you know, people getting to the point where they're they're not really, like, following um, – the trends of what's going on, they're kind of like standing on their own to, you know, kind of being separate from like everybody that's doing the same things. And, that, and, and like right now we have, just to switch gears for a second, we have like Kaepernick, right? Because mm-hmm. we was kind of talking about him and he's somebody that just started standing up for something different. True. Right? But now we have a situation where, um, you know, he, he had this opportunity come about and he kind of like, dipped off on it you know what i mean yeah which which is like a lot of people was like bro i thought this is what we were going for right okay so just for people who um, aren't clear on what happened mm-hmm. right obviously kaepernick call a kaepernick football player quarterback has been kind of blackballed at least that's how people feel right out of the league for about three years now nfl scheduled a workout for him short notice there's all these details right right that that are sketchy on both sides. But short notice point is he made some drastic changes at the end where he didn't show up and he rescheduled it to be an hour away from what Flowery Branch to Riverdale. If you in Atlanta understand what that is and what that could be like at uh, three o'clock on Saturday, that was like that could be an hour right. even more away. Um so you tell people this basically thirty to ten minutes beforehand and then wearing a Kuta Kente shirt and all these things and having this speech where you are antagonizing the NFL, people just felt like, like you said, like, yo, what happened? I thought this is what we wanted. Your actions don't seem to be in line with what we wanted. Right. All right? So, I don't know. For me, right, marketing branding standpoint, I'm not yeah. going to get into the cultural commentary and opinion here or there. Um, I think, there's, of course, there's always valid points on both sides. Right, you right. Go that, go, go that route. But let's just speak from Ka- Kaepernick's standpoint, right? Because we already know what the NFL is. It's a system, and it's not that they don't – it's sports agency, um, sports organizations, all that stuff as a whole. It's a corporation. Yes, you can say people are racist. Yes, you can say things like they don't care about – like you can, you can attribute all those things to them. Right. But the point is – when it comes to the money, most of the time, they don't really care. Like I think we over-index on how much people care due to the racism standpoint, just to be real. like Those corporations, if, you, if the money's moving forward, they don't really care. Yeah. Right? Like, there's like, I will, do I care about breast cancer? Eh, not really, but I'm going to still, <laughs> but but no, for real, I'm going to, but I'm going to do a breast care and, uh, awareness month because it's good for PR. And then also, I'm selling breast care aware, awareness, breast cancer awareness merch. Right. And they get 10% of it, but I'm really, this is another revenue model because right. people rock with this, right? It's, and I, oh, this organ, other organization, this other cause, all this stuff is still making me money at the end of the day and i'm moving along without any distractions yeah kaepernick became a distraction tim tebow if you don't understand what happened with him very very similar to kaepernick except it was jesus and people and him not being as good as people thought people people didn't think he was as good or worth their attention he was getting i'll just try to sum it up that way but he became a distraction even carmelo anthony to the extent which he finally just got back in the league some of it was and in a distraction, and you'll find that a lot of times for players that aren't so or at a point in their career where it's like you're not obvious where you will make a, you're the best in the world, but maybe you had that level of notoriety for whatever reason, mm-hmm. but we don't think you worth it. Like Lonzo Ball because of his dad, it's like we don't think he's worth it. To, like we, no, it's questionable if you're worth it talent wise, right? Mm-hmm. But you're bringing. You're bringing starter attention, superstar attention, and people are asking about it. That's a distraction for us at the end of the day. You get in the way of us just making money as fast and quietly as we want to. I think that's – people don't consider that part as much, which is still creates a lot of effed up stuff, right? Right. But it's like that's why. It's, the other things are just other narratives and comment, uh, comments. So, like, Cap, and I would like your comment on this, obviously. Like, you said, I thought – we were gonna do this, right? I thought right. We, I thought we wanted this, and I think that's the biggest question. Like when you're talking to your fan base, they need to be clear on what you want, right? Because you got all of these people that are like, you know, round everybody up, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got kids at school kneeling right now. You know what I mean? We got we got all this stuff happening for the change, and then you know, 
the opportunity came for, mm-hmm. you know, to, to shed some light on you in a positive way and was like, okay, this is the first step in the right direction. So we everybody was kind of excited for him, you know, and then he kind of like started switching stuff up. And then and then you get to a point where it's like you kind of got to pick sides at, at some point. Like, mm-hmm. like that, Cap, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be on your side with this, right? But it's like, why would you do all of this stuff? And then, you know, the whole thing with, like, you know, Jay-Z getting into uh, the NFL, you know, after he went on his track and was like, y'all need me, I don't need you, and all this. You know, he was just so team cap, you know what I'm saying? And then he got into the NFL, and then everybody was like, oh, you sold out, you this, this, and this. And so I was like, I, I always wonder, like, I don't know if Jay-Z kind of had a hand in, you know, setting this situation up. That's what cap. a lot of people are saying. That's they what they're saying, right? Mm-hmm. Because I know I seen him, like, make some type of comment and was like, you know, um, he put his reputation on the line, you mm-hmm. know. It's like putting his reputation on the line, getting into the NFL because of all the stuff and that I he said. I think someone said... So I think they, Rock Nation, uh, released an official statement saying that he basically hasn't talked to anybody saying nothing, but that was like something that people have said. He said too. It's another, you know, all this stuff becomes he say, she say, right? right? But that's the problem because what you're alluding to is just confusion. So when I think about clarity being the one of the strongest parts of brands, like it's cool when our NFL cap, but now when you have people that were on cap side starting to get a division, I thought that was what we wanted. Of course, you're going to have the other people that just ride. Yeah, he's sticking it to the man again. Right. Like, you know, but you're starting to create a division within your own right. fan base, right? And that's when stuff starts to become confusing because you haven't really stated openly, to my knowledge, right? This is clearly what we want. We're just constantly following the story. Right. And then everybody's building opinion and narrative but it's never coming directly for them. They might say, oh, we didn't say that here and there, or but they haven't really said, hey, this is what we're going for. This is where we work. Because remember, this all started because of re- police brutality, right? Yeah. So it's like, are we still working on that? Is that what you're still doing? Or now is it just about the fact that you were wronged? Which is another, like, right. you, you, are you were salty? wronged. Are you salty right? crackers? Yeah. And now it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I but, and he was wronged, right? But... But it's there, like, what is the end goal? Yeah, like, that's what, what is the end goal and why? Right. Are, are you trying to make a, a personal statement against the system? Because now it's starting to feel like egos. Like, is you, now we're just watching a battle of you against this thing? Or do you have a, a, a reason that you're doing what you're doing to affect a greater good for maybe future players in the NFL? Right. Or, like, or not, for them not to have to deal with stuff, set precedent. I don't know, but that's the point. Like when you when you calls for supporters, especially for something that's drawn out, yeah. like people at some point, like bro, all right, why are we doing this? They gonna right. start asking we questions. Start you know what, man? Like, let me let me just watch this football, bro. Cause I got <laughs> I'm tired, man. Like this is just another right. day. It's the only way I could connect with my son. So it was like, I, I love you, Cap, but you know that's that's where it's starting to come to a right. lot of I love you buts. And it's crazy. I feel like you know just with our entertainers in general. First of all, it's it's just amazing how much like the things that people that we kind of look up to as entertainers, like the things that they do or don't do, like literally be affecting us, you know, or fans. Mm -hmm. Like that's our life. You know what I mean? Like we be feeling it. When you go through something, we feel it. When you're saying you're not dealing with something, like you can literally, everybody went on like, we're not buying Gucci. So like the whole world was like, oh, we're not buying Gucci. And Mm -hmm. then as soon as like an artist be like, oh, we buying Gucci again. It's like now everybody want Gucci belts again. You know what I mean? So it's, it's crazy how like the world is affected by these people that are that are in you know the position to have these platforms and to really like set the tone for certain things you know what i mean and i think that's one reason why coming back to you being authentic about yourself who you are your brand and what you stand for like i think that's why it's so important because we have so many of you know the younger people looking up to certain people and like this is what i want to be this is Mm -hmm. what i want to do you know what i mean and it's like we're creating a generation of little monsters right now. You know what I mean? Like, we got little a bunch monsters. of monsters in this world. Like, they, <laughs> we got a whole bunch of savages. You feel me? Like, <laughs> they just ready to just do so many things because of what they are seeing from, like, these big people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, you got to be clear. Like, who are you? What are you standing for? So I can figure out, like, sometimes I need to f- figure out who I'm, who I am versus you know, who I'm looking up to, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. or or what I associate myself with, right? So I think, like, when it comes to artists and branding and all, like you were saying, like, it just, it definitely has to be a clear message. Like, and at some point we got to figure out, like, is are you moving this way because 
because you feel away or because like you're trying to change something or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta figure this thing out. Yep. That's 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 all it comes down to at the end of the day, right? Because now you get elevated to a position of leadership and you have to lead. Or you can clearly try to pass off leadership, but you need to be clear about what that looks like. Like, like right. oh, I'm not a leader. I'm just like I'm chill. Like you can. St- there's even ways to communicate that to your fan base. That's a whole other conversation. There's a lot of artists who be like, I'm not nobody's role model. Like right, yeah, a lot. So many people, but they, but they, why do they say that? Because they aren't aware of what it's like to the other side till they get there, and then they realize, oh snap, this little thing I said. This little girl literally just built her whole life around that. Right. I wore this haircut, and now I got a whole school wearing this haircut and right. thinking this is the way to do it. And and then, of course, some of the older people who have a different way of looking at things will say, yo, like, you need to get your stuff right. And the artist is trying to push back against all of those things. You don't expect to be in that position. But it comes back to, once again, your authenticity. What's you? Because if you start from that place, it makes it easier to handle the other things, as opposed to like somebody like Book, apparently, as based on what he said, where I was like parroting or uh, well, peacocking, I guess yeah, is a better peacocking. word. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you sound like somebody's grandma, not peacocking, it's my auntie. But now, like he was putting on this image, right, and right. then everything's being built off of something you don't necessarily even believe in. Right, and once and once it gets to, to that, it. once it gets to that other side, it becomes a monster that's growing in and of itself. So, I know that could be hard to deal with, but yeah, authenticity makes it a lot easier on the front end. So that goes back to the initial question of the podcast: Is getting into the industry a dream filler? Is it filling fulfilling people's dreams, or is it a dream killer? Is it killing people's dreams? Um. For me, you know, I can't go more than uh, one particular way. I would say ultimately it kills people's expectations. Mm. Like They think it's this thing. They weren't educated on it. They came into this life as a consumer, and you've been sold this in- image of what it's like. Right. And then dealing with it as a business, as most of these businesses, working at AT&T ain't all just being on the cell phone. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, you know, like, you get you get to see that, and there's a lot, of, there's definitely an ugly side to it, 100%. You know what I mean? There's definitely a lot of shadiness to it, but that's the part, right, it's, it, that people don't get to see. Like, even just the regular work, not above all the, the evil stuff that might happen. Artists don't see, they just see, like, on the front end, as a consumer, you see the stage, Mm -hmm. you see, you hear the music, you know what I mean, you see the interviews. Now we're in an era where, you know, you can get educated on more of the other sides beforehand, but that's why I think ultimately it's going to be handled right, because we're seeing this, we have more access to more sides of it, so at some point, it won't even be killing expectations, because the expectations will be a little bit more... You know, it'll be based on real information or, or, right. or more perspective and context. So pretty much is is your obligation as an artist or entertainer or creative or, or a business person, whatever you're doing, it's kind of like your responsibility to really research and study and start looking into things like before you jump into these contracts, these deals, you know, whatever, these these partnerships or whatever you're doing. It's like really on us to do some research because I feel like, especially now, a lot of those answers are in front of our face. You know, how mm-hmm. is it when it when you sign the things you go through? I feel like those answers are in front of our face because these artists are basically telling us. Some of them tell us without even telling us just the way that they move, the way that they look their You know, the things that they're putting out on social media, the way that they're sitting in interviews looking like I don't even want to be here. You know what I mean? It's like the answers, they're putting this stuff out to us, but we, sometimes when we want something so bad, it's like we don't see all the negative stuff. You know what I mean? We ignore all the signs just because, like, all I see is what I want. You know what I mean? So I think it's it's important, you know, for everybody to really, like, start doing your research and then understand your own worth. You know what I mean? If you know you got talent, if if somebody really wants to pick you up, that means – Somebody else probably want to pick you up. You know what I mean? That means you got something, right? Yeah. So it's like I think it's important for us to learn how to like turn ourselves into business and manage ourselves and market ourselves and wear these hats ourselves so that we understand what it even takes to get to that level and and we know that we put the work in because once you if you start setting those type of goals and you start, you know, climbing up knowing that you have been the one getting you there, like I feel like that would just 
make the our indie community feel like, yo, I can do more. Like, I can do this. I don't really need such and such to coast on me. Like, I'm already, mm-hmm. I got the momentum. You know what I mean? I feel like if yep. more artists went that route and really put the work in um, to really build up their brand, build up their fan base and all that good stuff, I feel like they would appreciate the indie side of things and kind of, like, keep that going and not be so pressed to sign this deal because people somebody's coming at them talking, oh, I can give you this and give you that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I think look, everything's trending in the right direction, in my opinion. I know people are negative, but I'm t- typically an optimist um, in, in a lot of that area of things. Yeah. But, look, we want to know what y'all's answer is. Does it fulfill dreams? Does it kill dreams? Other than that, look, no name podcast, once again, but that's only because we don't have one. We want y'all to give us something, right. hopefully. But if it's whack, we just hopefully we're going to have to figure out something ourselves, right? <laughs> right. Um, but we want to do this. Let us know if y'all are just interested in something else that we should talk about at some point. We'll get, we'll, we're will get. we working on it. We're working on it. Appreciate y'all supporting being here. It's Lady J Bookums. Lady J Bookums. Follow me on Instagram at Lady J Bookums. Follow me on IG at Brandman Sean. Hit that subscribe button. All that good stuff. We out. Peace.